Hello, I'm Daniela Mellon. In today's video, we're going to slow stitch a waffle ice cream cone. We'll use this in our work. It could be the centerpiece, it could be the focal point, it could just be a little element that you add in. I like to make my miniature and to make little charms that I can add to my slow stitching, but they can easily be made as the main focus. Now, depending on the fabric that you choose for the ice cream, you'll get a totally different effect. And fabrics come in so many different patterns and colors, whether you use batik or a tie-dye, you can get a really interesting look. And you can base it on your favorite flavor of ice cream. The ice cream itself is very easy to make. You cut a shape of fabric, you add a little fabric ruffle, which I'll show you how to make. It's very simple. And you just attach it to your piece. So let's get started. So here's a very simple version. This is a little charm. I'd cut around it and use this little ice cream cone in my slow stitching. I'm going to show you a slight variation on this technique today. The same basic premise, however. So to get started, you'll need your backing. This is just a piece of light canvas. I have this beautiful color fabric for my ice cream. I'm going to use a little swatch of fabric to make the cone. This step is optional. You can skip it all together and just do your stitching. And then I have some thread that sort of matches my ice cream color. And I have thread just a little bit darker still in the brown shade for the ice cream cone. So to get started, I want to start with my ice cream cone. The premise is just to make a very simple shape, just a V, and then choose one of those lines and make a few more lines parallel to it, and then match the other side with parallel lines. Now you can modify this if you want, if you have your ice cream cone and you want to make it perfectly checkered. You can do that as well. And that's where it starts to become very personal. I'm going to set this aside and I'll start here with my canvas. I try to make my ice cream cone considerably smaller than the ice cream above it. It's just always a treat to have a bunch of ice cream, but you can modify that as well if you want to make a giant cone and a little bit of ice cream or you want to keep them approximately the same size. So I'm just going to kind of quickly sketch out a rough idea of my ice cream cone size. And I think I want to make that bottom rounded instead of coming to a point. And so then I'll stitch over here. Now because I have this swatch of fabric that I want to use, I'm going to just cut the fabric approximately that size. Now to do that, I just fold it in half, make it just a little bit taller than I wanted. and then cut that triangle like this. Then I can trim it down. So I'll fold it in half again. And then just round out the base. So there I have my ice cream cone shape. I'll pin it in place and I'll start stitching it down. So I have some floss. I'm using all six strands here and it's a little bit larger than the cone. Now I'm going to start by just trying to capture it in place. So I'll make just a tiny stitch on the bottom going through both of my fabrics. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And this just helps anchor it in place. Now, if I was just stitching this down without the fabric, I'd stitch a back stitch all the way around the three sides of the cone, or the two if I make them come to a point. I leave the top completely open. That'll be covered with the fabric for the actual ice cream. So at this point, I can remove my pin because it's a little bit bulky. And I'm going to start on one side and I'm going to, again, make those lines parallel to the side here. So here's my line. You can make as many or as few as you like. And then on the other side, I'll do the same thing. Again, going parallel to this line. And you could play with however you want them, how close or how far apart you want them. Because my ice cream cone fabric is anchored, I can start anywhere. I'm going to start right here on the longest 
stretch, come up through my canvas and basically make a giant couching stitch over my little ice cream fabric here, my ice cream cone fabric. And I'll come down on this side, right on the area that I sketched that line. So I'm kind of creating a weaving. I'm gonna go over here to the next one. Again, come up just through the canvas and stitch all the way over. And I'll continue this on all of these parallel lines on the side of the cone. So now once I have those lines done, I'll come on this side and stitch the remaining lines. Again, I'm coming up through just the canvas and stitching across the cone. So there I have my cone. I can go in there and just tack down a few stitches just on those little intersections by coming up on one side of the little cross and going down on the other. So I'll do that on all of them just because I think it makes the piece look a little more finished and there is a long stitch here for each of those ice cream cone little diagonals, the little honeycomb, I guess, of the ice cream cone. So there I've stitched my ice cream cone. You can continue to add embellishments, additional stitches if you want, but I'm quite pleased with that. I'll flip it over, make a knot on the back, and then we can start with our ice cream. So now to make the ice cream, you can really play around with the size you wanna make the ice cream. You wanna make sure you have enough fabric to make the ruffle. So if I was making a really jumbo cone, I'd need additional fabric. But for this one, I'm thinking just a little bit of a cone here. So I'll flip this over on the wrong side and just kind of sketch a rough shape. I think that's pretty good. I'll cut it a little larger than intended And I'm just trying to make a rough round shape. So I fold my fabric in half, making it just a little larger than the sketch. And I have a nice shape for the top of my ice cream. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Came out right on the first try. In most cases, I'll have to come back and trim it just around the edges, but that's a nice size. So I have just one strand of the embroidery floss that matches that thread. Now I want to stitch all the way around this ice cream to hold it in place. I'll make sure it's where I want. It's just barely covering up the top of the cone. It doesn't have to cover it up all because I'm going to put a little ruffle on it. So I'll take my pin, hold my fabric in place, and then I'm just going to stitch just three quarters of the way around the perimeter of the cone. If you want to stitch over the edge of the ice cream, you can. I just don't find it necessary. So I'll just make a little stitch, a little, almost a running stitch, just around the edge here. So now I've stitched all the way around my little ice cream scoop here, a little ball of ice cream. You could leave it like that. It is indicative of an ice cream cone, but I think that little ruffle along the edge really takes it up a notch. So to stitch the ruffle, it's a very simple technique. You'll take your scrap of fabric. And this is just a little scrap. You can see the pinked edge. I'm gonna trim that off. And I want it to be at least three times the length of the cone, roughly. So I just need two strips of this length fabric. So now I'm gonna take my scissors and just cut off one edge because I don't want that pinking edge showing. And then I'm gonna cut a nice thick piece of fabric. Trim off the edges. And now to make that little ruffle, I'm gonna cut this in half. So I just fold it in half, finger press it, and then I just trim in between here. So now I have the length of the ribbon I need to make my ruffle. To make the ruffle, 
I have six strands of embroidery floss here with a knot on the end. And I don't need very much embroidery floss. I don't need it to be very long. I'm going to take one end of one of the ribbons, it doesn't matter in this case, and I'm going to fold it just to make a neater edge. I'll take my needle and come up through the center of that to hide the little knot somewhat, and then I'll stitch through it to hold it closed. And then I'll come up right again, just in the center. So now from here, I just want to do a very loose running stitch, like a basting stitch, where I'll stitch, poke my needle in and out every so often, maybe every quarter inch or so. You can vary this as much as you like. You want to go through the entire length of that strip. And then when I get to the end of it, I'm going to take my additional fabric and just cross over it. And now I'll stitch through that, I'm trying to combine the two. And I'll continue making my little running stitch, my basting stitch. Because I have a long needle, I can go most of the length without pulling my needle through. And when I have about an inch on the end, that's when I like to pull my needle through. So I just gently pull the fabric. And you can see when the thread is pulled taut, it bunches up very tightly. So then I just want to just gently pull it apart somewhat. I'm trying to get an approximate length so that when I put it around the ice cream cone, I have a little bit of a ruffle. So I just want to pull it apart a little bit more. I can always add another strip of fabric or a little piece of fabric, but I think I have enough here to do that nicely. And they do. So at the very end, you can leave this edge raw, but I just turn it over just slightly. I'll stitch through it and come up through that turned edge. And then I'll just play around pulling and stretching the fabric until I get the exact shape and length that I want. And to me that looks pretty good. Just stretch it a little bit over here. Now I'm leaving my needle still intact, not removing it. But I am taking a pin. When I'm happy with where that is, I'll just pin that in place. So now I'm going to take the end of my thread, which is still attached to my needle and still attached to the fabric, and stitch down and start to anchor this in place. I only need a few stitches throughout the length of this little ruffle. You can come up in between stitches, you can come up on the peaks or the valleys. That's up to you. I tend to hide my stitches somewhat and I'll skip every two or three little ruffle spots and just do a tiny little stitch. You can remove that pin. Again, play around with your ruffle. And once you're happy with it, just make your stitches to hold it in place. And when you're happy with your ruffle, just knot off your thread. You can clean up any little frayed edges, snip off any little pieces of fabric that don't belong. And you have a really cute ice cream cone. Now let me show you some variations. So I showed you the charm originally. I just love how the different color looks. And here you can see how I outlined the cone and then I did my long stitches. Here I did a variation where I took just a little burlap ribbon, stitched through it to make the cone, but the top of the ice cream looks just the same. And then if you're somebody like me who likes a double scoop, you can just do two of them. So here the fabric was a tie-dye look, so the ruffle is quite different than the fabric. Whereas over here, it was very clear exactly where it fell on the fabric. It looks like just a different texture. But with this one, because of the print of the fabric, it's slightly different. And you get a different result depending on the fabric you choose. You also get a different result depending on the cone formation you make. So that's how I slow stitch an ice cream cone to use in my work. 
I think it's a cute little element, depending on the pastel fabric you choose or the bright colors, you get a different look. And it's a nice little piece, a little unexpected for sewing. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining me today.